Hello, and welcome aboard the Gatwick Express cab ride from London, Victoria to Gatwick Airport non-stop. Today we are filming from the cab of a Class 460 Juniper, unit number 460008. While the driver awaits a path out of Victoria, let's talk a little about the station. On 23 July 1858, the Victoria Station and Pimlico Railway was incorporated with the object of extending the railway across the river to a more convenient location near the West End. The station you know today opened in 1860 and was formed in two parts. The western side, occupied by the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway Company, with six platforms, ten tracks and a hotel, the 300-bedroom Grosvenor Hotel while the eastern side was occupied by the London, Chatham and Dover Railways Company, which at the time had a less imposing wooden-fronted building. This eastern station had nine tracks, which were shared by broad-gauge trains of the GWR, which arrived from Southall via the West London Extension Joint Railway through Chelsea. The approach tracks were built on the route and basin of the Grosvenor Canal. The GWR was a part owner of the station until 1932, although its trains had long since ceased to use it. At the start of the 20th century, both parts of the station were rebuilt. It now had a decent frontage and forecourt, but not as yet a unified existence. The station was redeveloped internally in the 1980s, with the addition of shops within the concourse. Above the western platforms is the Victoria Place Shopping Center. Outside the station is the Victoria Bus Station, not to be confused with the Coach Station located the other side of Victoria Rail Station. The bus station sees 19 bus routes pass or terminate, with around 200 buses per hour using the station in the peak hours. Victoria also serves as the London terminus for the Venice Simplon Orient Express from Platform 2, the longest platform. The Gatwick Express service operates from platforms 13 and 14 and are the only platforms that do not have ticket barriers. A dedicated ticket office and ticket machines are at the end of the platforms, but passengers are permitted to buy their tickets on the train from the conductor. The Class 460s are seen only on Gatwick Express services and are designed to cater for customers traveling to and from the airport. Luggage racks are provided in each carriage along with a luggage van for larger items, which is in one of the driving cars, which is at the London end of the train, so it is closest to the concourse. Our train departs out of platform 13. Left as we round the bend are the Grosvenor carriage sheds. This is occupied by Southeastern and is used for stabling their Class 375 and Networker fleet of Class 465 and 466 electric multiple units overnight to save long ECS moves from Hither Green or Slade Green. The track layout does not allow much swapping with only a small number of connecting flyovers between the main lines in the Battersea area plus a single track connection immediately outside the station. As the Brighton side is the busier of the two, 
disruption on that line sometimes results in some of its suburban services using the eastern side. This is particularly true of the Gatwick Express, which travels along the Brighton Main Line, as it will often divert over Chatham side tracks during engineering works in order to maintain service levels. We now cross over the River Thames by way of the Grosvenor Bridge, often referred to as Victoria Railway Bridge. This was the first railway bridge over the Thames in central London and is actually two bridges in one. The western side of the bridge being built between 1865 and 1866 by the LBSCR and the eastern side was built by the LCDR between 1858 and 1860. Both bridges were rebuilt in steel between 1963 and 1967. The original piers now being encased in concrete. Just ahead on the left is Battersea Power Station, now defunct. Battersea Pier Junction, the London Bridge route via Peckham Rye diverges off to the left. Battersea Park Station. The station remains effectively unmodernized since its construction in the Victorian era. With the redevelopment of Battersea Power Station into the Power Station London, the railway station is due a complete refurbishment. The contract was awarded to the Costain Group in April 2006. fly over the Southwest Trains lines from Waterloo to Reading and Windsor, Portsmouth and Weymouth and Salisbury and Exeter. As we line up with the aforementioned lines, we are on the approach to Britain's busiest railway station, Clapham Junction, situated in the London borough of Wandsworth. Before the railway came, the area was rural and specialized in growing lavender. Lavender Hill is to the east of Clapham Station. Hard to believe, isn't it? On 21 May 1838, the London and Southampton Railway, which became the London and Southwestern Railway that day, opened its line from Nine Elms as far as walking. This was the first railway through the area, but it had no station at the present site. The line to Victoria opened by 1860. Clapham Junction Station opened on 2 March 1863 as a joint venture of the L and SWR the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway and the West London Extension Railway to be an interchange station for the Windsor Southwestern Main Line, Brighton and WLER lines. Additional station buildings were erected in 1874 and 1876. The station brought development to the area around it and the population rose from 6,000 in 1840 to 168,000 by 1910. 